What's up, High Street Youth? Uh, my name is Ian Richards. My family and I are missionaries to Australia. I am so excited that you clicked on this video right now uh, because I, I, I have some things that I feel like God wants me to share with you today. And I want to talk to you today about your purpose. Uh, and you know what? God's purpose for my life is that I take the good news of Jesus to people that are all the way across the world uh, in a country called Australia. Uh, and you know what? Several years ago, my wife Amanda and I put our yes on the table. Uh, and since then, God has taken our family, my wife, my daughters, Lily, Adeline, and Emmy, across the world. And I have the pleasure of being the lead pastor of North Point Church in Canberra, Australia. And you know what? This is God's purpose for my life. This is why he made me. This is the plan he had for me when he was putting me together as, as a little baby. That The reason I was born was to take the message of Jesus to people all the way across the world. And today I wonder, I wonder if you've ever thought about what is my purpose? Why did God make me? Why did God put me here on this earth? But before we start talking about purpose, I want to ask you a question. If God moved in your life today, if God showed you today your purpose, if God, if God revealed himself to you today, would you be willing to say yes to him? Because you know what? what for me and my wife, the only reason that we're doing what we're doing is because years ago, we took the yes and we put it on a table and we said, God, whatever you would have us to do with our life, we'll do. And then God slowly began calling us to go and take the good news of Jesus to people in Australia. And I'm wondering if today... If you would say, you know what, God, if you move in my life today, if you move in my heart today, I will say yes to you. Maybe you're, you're, you're listening and you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're listening and you've never started a relationship with God. But what if God moved in your heart today? Would you say yes to him? Would you say yes? If God showed you the purpose he had for you, would you say yes today? You know, there's this, this author named Mark Twain. He's a pretty famous author. He wrote stuff like Huckleberry Finn and uh, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And he says this, he says, the two greatest days in a person's life are the day that they're born and the day that they find out why. You know, it's a big passion of me to encourage people to find out why they were born. What is God's plan for your life? What does God have for you to accomplish in life? And here's really what I want to talk to you about today. I want to encourage you today. Don't waste your life. I want to encourage you today to make your life count. And you know what? You know how we do that? You know how we make our life count? We make our life count by submitting our life to Jesus. Because when people meet Jesus, Jesus gives them purpose and Jesus changes them. This morning or today, we're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to be in verses 14 through 21. And I want to look at three ways that Jesus changes us today, okay? In verse 14, there's a guy called Paul. And he was a missionary. And he, he literally, um, in his day, he went planting, starting new churches in places that, that the, like, the known world, like all of the world that they knew, he went around planting churches. And there was this one church in a city called Corinth. It was a real city. There were real people. It was a real church. And he wrote them a letter and he actually wrote them too. And in the second letter he wrote to them, he says this in verse 14 of chapter five, he says, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ Jesus died for all, we also believe or we, yeah, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died, Jesus, he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have, a, we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has be become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And you know, these verses, what I want you to see in them is that Jesus changes you from at the very core of your being. Jesus changes you. He changes your character. He changes who you are in public, but he also changes who you are in private. You see, Paul says that, that when you give your life to Christ, he, be, he begins a new work in you. You become a new person, a new creation. The old life that you had is now gone. The new life is now begun. And here's what happens. 
is that you start to see people differently. He changes the way you view people. He changes the way you see people. And instead of just seeing a skater or a gothic person or an emo, you start to see people who are spiritual beings instead of just people as physical beings. There's a guy called C.S. Lewis, and he says it like this. He says that we are not physical beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. This is what Jesus does to you. He takes you from being a physical being having a spiritual experience to being a spiritual being who's having a physical experience. He makes the spirit inside of you alive. And he makes you a new person. He changes who you are at the very core of your being. And what happens to you is you go from seeing poor people and lawyers and presidents and, and homeless, and you see instead, you see people who need Jesus. You see them differently. You don't see the outs outward appearance. You look and you see something completely different. Jesus changes who you are at the very core of your being. You know, Jesus also changes your passion. Uh, Paul goes on and he says this. He says, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. You see, when you meet Jesus, he changes your passion. He gives you a purpose for life. And maybe you're watching right now and you're like, what does this mean? What in the world does all this mean? That, that God is reconciling people to himself through Christ. What does this mean? Here's what this means. You know, if you are a sinner, I am a sinner. Because of my sin, I was separated from God. God's over here. I'm over here. And God sent Jesus, his very own son, to die on a cross, to pay the penalty that I owed so that I could be reconciled back to God. That's what it means to accept Jesus as your Savior. It means that you are being reconciled back to God. You see, because of our sin, we have been separated from God. And Jesus came and he died and he gave his life in your place. Because you know what? You owed a, a, a debt that you could not pay. And Jesus paid that debt that he did not owe. And he did it for you. He did it for your sake. That if you would stop right now and you would say, you know, God, I am a sinner. And I need Jesus to save me. That you too could be reconciled back to God. You too can start a new relationship. And you know what? Maybe you're watching and you're thinking, yeah, but I don't understand all this stuff. That's the beauty of following Jesus. Is that you don't have to understand it all. It takes faith. All you have to do is cry out to Jesus and say, you know what? I am a sinner and I believe that you did come and you died on a cross for my sins and you rose again from the dead. Jesus, I want you to make me new. I want you to give me new life. I want you to give me purpose. That's what happens when you meet Jesus. Jesus changes your character. He changes your passion. And you know what? He changes your word. He changes, he gives you purpose. Jesus gives us a purpose. He's given us a job of reconciling people back to God. Paul says this in verse 20. He says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ. You see, if you're watching right now and you're a follower of Jesus, You've put your faith and trust in Jesus. I want you to know something, that God gave you a job when he made you a new creation. He made you an ambassador for him. Now, let me, let me explain to you this. Let me explain to you what, about what an ambassador does. An ambassador takes the wishes of a ruler to people of another country, right? And so imagine if I was an ambassador to Australia, which I would love to be. And if the president wants to offer me that, I am so much more than happy right now to accept that offer, even over video right now. But if, if you're an ambassador, you take the wishes of your country to a, another country. And what God has said to us is that we are ambassadors for Christ. We are taking the good news of Christ, the message of reconciliation, and we are taking that to people who don't have it. I want you to know, if you know Jesus, you have a purpose for your life. 
God's purpose for your life is to take the message, the good news of Jesus, the hope that you have that if you just confess your sin and you believe on Jesus, you can be saved and he will change you from the inside out. God has given you a job. You know, I want, I want to tell you a story about my friend. Um, I know a guy called Brent, and Brent is the most fit person I know. Brent had, had this, this desire to break the world record for the most bench presses ever done by a person in his weight class. Brent was like 185 pounds, and he could bench 225 pounds over 50 times. There was only two players in the NFL that could bench more times than Brent could. And a couple months back, Brent was on vacation in Dallas, Texas, and he was fishing, all day fishing with his friend Ryan. The next day on Friday, he went to Six Flags, and they hung out all day riding roller coasters. And after they were done, they were driving home, and Brent's from Springfield, but he was in Dallas on, on vacation, and they're driving back to Ryan's house and Ryan said that they were talking about how awesome life was and how great life was. And Brent had recently started dating this girl a couple months, ago, months before, and he was like, she is so great. I think she's the one for me. Man, God's blessings on my life right now are so good. And Ryan said that the last thing that Brent ever said was this, God is so good. And Ryan said he, he felt the car start veering over to the side of the road and he looked over and his friend's head was in his lap and he was driving down the highway and Ryan grabbed the steering wheel and he took his foot off the gas and he pulled up the e-brake and he pulled over to the side of the road. And for 25 minutes, Ryan tried to give Brent CPR and bring him back, but he couldn't. And my 28 year old friend, Brent, who was the most fit person I know, out of the blue, his heart stopped and he was dead. He was gone forever. And it's the craziest thing. And the reason I tell you that story is this, is that maybe you're like really young and you're like 28's pretty old, but I don't, 28's not very old, okay? That's still really young. Guys, I'm begging you, don't waste your life. You don't know how long you have. You don't know if you have tomorrow even. Don't waste your life. You don't have forever. And my plea to you is like Paul, be reconciled to Christ. And if you already know Jesus, here's my plea to you. Make your moment count. Make this time that you have count. Because here's the thing, your friends don't have forever. They don't have forever. You only have a short amount of time to take the good news of Jesus to them. They don't have forever and you don't have forever. Don't waste your life. You know, there are people that you know, there are people that you know that are waiting for you to come to them and to bring you the story of Jesus, that they can have forgiveness of their sins, that they can have freedom from their sins. They're dying inside. They want a purpose. They want something for their life, and they're waiting for you. They're waiting for you to take the message of reconciliation to them so that they too can know God and be reconciled to him. You know, I want to close with two verses out of Romans chapter 12. The same guy, Paul, writes to this church in, in Rome, Italy, and he says these words. He says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable this is true, truly the way to worship him. Now, I want you to pay really close attention to this. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You know, guys, if you want to know what God has for your life. If you want to know the purpose God has for your life, Paul tells us that if we would let God transform us, if we would let God make us into a new person and change the way that we think, then we will know the purpose he has for our life. Let me ask you a question. Are you willing to put your yes on the table? Are you willing to say yes to God if he calls you to do something? Let me encourage you guys, don't 
waste your life.